am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we write out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different organic transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this organic transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. This is a fascinating reaction in which we're protonating this molecule to make a heterocycle. And in fact, this work was published by Kamatori and co-workers in the journal that's actually known as Heterocycles. And they published this work in 2005 in the volume 65, beginning on page number 2139, for anyone who's interested in checking out this work. And as you might have predicted, since we have a carbonyl compound and acetic acid, the first step is going to be to protonate this oxygen. So acetic acid can be used as a proton source to generate acetate as the conjugate base and protonate this position. And now for the product of this transformation, I'm actually going to draw it in a slightly different way because I want you to see exactly what's happening in these next steps. So remember that we have this dimethylamine located at this position and I'm drawing in one of the actual methyl groups, which is CH3. And then from here, we have this nitrogen to nitrogen bond, and then a nitrogen to carbon double bond, which is where our R group is coming off. And then adjacent to that, we have that carbonyl group, which is now gonna be positively charged since we've protonated that oxygen, and then the trifluoromethyl group is located here. And remember, what we've done by protonating that oxygen is make this position incredibly susceptible to nucleophilic attack, even by things that aren't generally considered to be strong nucleophiles. So what can actually happen is that this lone pair of electrons on this dimethylamine can actually come down to form an iminium ion, and that will actually serve to allow this carbon to hydrogen bond to act as a nucleophile and come and do a hydride shift effectively where we're kicking up these pi electrons to make a neutral alcohol. So then the product of that transformation, I'll draw from you because it looks pretty wild is actually going to be this aminium ion which we've generated in that step where we did the hydride shift and then the rest of our molecule mostly looks the same except for importantly we have now made this alcohol neutral because we placed a hydrogen attached to it with this trifluoromethyl group and remember we can actually shift around sigma bonds so what I'll do is actually redraw this molecule where you can see that what will happen is that it rotates to actually place the alcohol located in this position and our trifluoromethyl group can be over here. And this is important because it places these lone pairs of electrons on this oxygen near this aminium ion. And the aminium ion is not so different from this carbonyl group in which we have a protonated oxygen. Here we have a protonated nitrogen. And just like before, where that effectively means that we turbocharge the electrophilicity of the carbon to oxygen double bond. In this case, we have a carbon to nitrogen double bond, which means that we can do a nucleophilic attack here, which will shift over these pi electrons and make us have our neutral nitrogen, but also serve to close the ring in our heterocycle. And once we've done that, we've basically made our entire molecule because what we've done is we've closed that ring. The rest of our molecule still looks mostly the same. And we have this trifluoromethyl group located at this position. And the only thing that's different from this in our final product is that this oxygen is still protonated, which means we just have to have a proton transfer where the conjugate base acetate that we formed previously just comes in and deprotonates this to make this a neutral oxygen. So then even if you're not familiar with these types of transformations, you have learned about the chemistry necessary in order to complete this transformation, where the first step happens by protonating that carbonyl oxygen. This is gonna turbocharge the electrophilicity of that carbon that's a part of the carbonyl, where even things like weak nucleophiles, like in this case, a hydride, can come actually break this carbon to hydrogen bond and do a hydride shift to attack that position to make this neutral. In doing so, this nitrogen and move down these electrons to make what's known as an iminium ion, where you have a carbon to nitrogen double bond and the nitrogen is positively charged. This again makes that neighboring carbon susceptible to nucleophilic attack by even something like an alcohol, which will come and close the ring, kicking over the pi electrons, giving us a neutral nitrogen, but now a positively charged oxygen, which can undergo a simple proton transfer to get that final heterocycle. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, give it a thumbs up down below. And for next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron push arrow mechanism for this organic transformation. Drop your thoughts as a comment down below and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss out on another Mechanism Monday. I'll see you next week.